podcast. Carol, tell me a little bit about your podcast and, and where you're getting going and uh, some of the hang-ups you're having. Well, <clears throat> I actually, I've just started. I started interviewing people. My podcast is called Caregivers Concierge. And so I've been doing research and getting authors and caregivers and experts in the field. Um, and I'm just setting up interview schedules right now. So that's kind of where I'm at. What type of caregivers are you focusing on? Um, taking care of uh, elderly people, your parents, um, you know, or if you're sandwich generation, you're taking care yeah. of your kids and your, and your parents. And there's a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, what about hospice care? Are you are you looking to going toward that end as well? No, we'll probably touch on that. Yeah. I'll have experts in that field, but um, it's more about just you know, it's the whole process, I guess. Yeah. Well, and that is sadly the pro the end of the process. So mm -hmm. I, I used to be a hospice chaplain. Is the reason why I was asking. Oh, that. really? Wow. Uh, now, so you're starting your interviews, you're scheduling your interviews. What else have you done to get yourself ready for when your podcast goes live? Uh, I've been working on my website, my landing page to start collecting um, uh, names of, of interested people. And um, that's about it so far. Okay. So Are I'm just barely beginning. <laughs> do what? I'm barely beginning. Well, that's good. Uh, when, wh when are you hoping to be able to launch a podcast? I would like to do it by uh, mid-April. So in like two or three weeks. Right. If if I told you that I could help you guarantee that you have an audience when you start on day one, if you took a little bit longer to launch. And not only that, I can help you find out the topics that you need to cover to serve that audience. If you took a little bit longer, would that help you any? Probably. Okay. Let me let me tell you what I tell my coaching clients when they're getting ready to launch. Is that you need to find out where the people that you will serve with your podcast hang out online. Mm-hmm. If it's a Facebook group, if it's a forum, wherever it is. And as you find more of those places, you'll find even more because you'll ask, hey, by the way, is there any other place online you find out great information? And then they point you to great you know, resources online. And it may be a blog, and you just have to deal with the comments, which is a pain in the butt. But you know, that may be where you, where you find them. Uh -huh. But my point is, is to find where your people are and mm -hmm. hang out with them and become one of them. Answer their questions. If you have answers to the questions, answer the questions. If you have solutions to their problems, solve their problems. Uh, catalog the issues and the struggles that they're having and catalog the thought leaders in each of those groups get a little bit closer to those thought leaders and actually consider bringing them on as a guest for your podcast later on. That's where I've been getting my names, exactly. Exactly. And so, but the thing is, is if you'll make a list of those struggles and those pains and those problems that they're having, then you're immediately creating podcast content. Because, okay. Well, at least getting yourself ready to create the podcast. Mm -hmm. So you, now you have topics. You have things that you can deal with in a regular basis. The other thing is, is to offer assistance to people as much as possible. And then as you get closer and closer and closer to your launch date, put some content that answers those problems and those pains and those, those, you know, those deals that they're having to deal with. If you don't already have it on your, on your blog, put it out there, and then provide links to it. Make okay. sure you have a sign-up form with some freebie that you're giving away mm -hmm. so that they have the freedom to exchange their email address for whatever it is you're going to give them. Okay. Uh, and if you'll extend your launch time a little bit longer mm -hmm. and you spend a good bit of time doing this on a daily basis, and by the end of, and what I tell my guys is by the end of 60 days, 
you'll have a following and when you launch your podcast you will immediately have listeners you will immediately have reviewers you'll immediately have evangelists for what you're doing because you've already given to them you've poured into their life and now they're going oh hey this is some good information I need to share it with people that makes sense and so and and the cool thing is is they don't even know it but they're telling you what to podcast to them right right but you give and give and give and give and give and then strategize. You know, the cool thing is, is uh, if you've got three or four episodes already scheduled to record, that's great. You've got three or four episodes already scheduled to record, which will be content you can use. And then I also tell them to work on getting a content catalog up. I mean, excuse me, a content calendar up. Sorry, it's been a long day and my blood sugar's kind of... Mm. Crazy today. Uh, but um, but you know, get a calendar, schedule what content you're going to put out when, uh, and and then be able to promote that. The cool thing about having a content calendar is you're able to promote that ahead of time. Okay, great. And the other thing, the other cool thing about it is, is if you're uh, if you're if you've got your content calendared then you know when you have to have all this stuff produced, edited, posted on Libsyn and scheduled. And so it helps you a little bit with your task management. But it also helps you, you can, when you're interviewing, say, former podcast chaplain, I mean, former uh, uh, hospice chaplain Phil Swindle, I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not suggesting, I'm just saying, I'm pulling stuff out of what hair I got. Um, but you know, when you're talking to him and he raises the issue of dealing with social workers, then you'll say, well, you know, that's cool because we've got a, this social worker coming up in a few more podcasts from now, and she's going to, you know, even though you've never interviewed her yet, you can say she's going to be talking directly to our listeners about the needs and how to deal with a social worker. So you know, now you're able to promote a podcast you haven't even produced yet. Uh -huh. You have this calendar. And so you know, you know, and you never will, if you ever record all of your podcast in order, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Because somebody's not going to make it at the time you'd like them to. So, you know, and somebody needs to do it now rather than later. And so you'll never, ever, I, I'm just telling you now, don't expect to record your podcast episodes in order if you structure your podcast in such a way that you're dealing with topics and you're, you, know, you have a strategy to it. Uh -huh. It's like I recorded John Lee Dumas the end of February, uh, excuse me, the end of January, and I knew that I wanted him to run in the month I was doing some stuff on Twitter bombing because he's a strong, powerful voice, and I knew what his thoughts were on that on that issue. So I, I'd already had all my other Twitter bombing episodes recorded in Dece the end of December, first of January, but I waited because John Lee, I couldn't get him from November when I started asking to the end of January. So I, I knew that I was just going to have to wait on that one. And so I did. And it was an awesome episode. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, is if you have that strategy, then you know you don't have to sweat it. Even if he's not going, even if whoever you're trying to interview, you're not able to interview until a week before it comes out. You're okay because you know what your strategy is. You know what your content is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so, you know, and, and then you also know if, if you're waiting until that last week, you also know you need a plan B in place. Mm -hmm. So it helps. Content Calendar is an awesome tool to be able to help you. It also helps you be able to create, create pod, blog posts that support your content. So that if you're doing, let's say you're doing like Michael Hyatt, and you release a podcast episode and two blog posts a week. Well, now you know how to tie in to one of those blog posts, not only what you talked about in the previous episode, but also to tease what's coming up in the next episode. 
So everything begins to feed it, each other. Uh -huh. And so the content calendar is a huge, strong, powerful tool in a podcasting uh, arsenal. Great. Thank you. Uh, but like I said, uh, if you interact in those forums, in those groups, in those Facebook pages or whatever, then what you're doing is, is you're you're creating the contacts you need for content. You're also creating you're also discovering the content you need to create because they're gonna they're gonna tell you what it is they're struggling with. Okay. And and if it sounds like you've already had some experience in this, if you have from experience some information you can share with them that can help them solve their problems by all means do that okay yeah yeah my mom moved in with us in September so it's uh, that kind of is coming from my heart yeah I'm sure and it's a struggle I, I as a minister and as a former hospice chaplain I respect greatly children who take care of their parents mm-hmm it's a it's a struggle you end up having to baby parents and you never ever ever thought you would end up doing that right and it's a struggle having to take that superhero mom or dad and whether you love them or not uh, you know they they did at one time have that status in your eyes and mm -hmm. to take that and to see them struggle and hurt and not be able to take care of themselves and not remember and all of those other things that go on with that is a huge struggle so thank you for taking care of your parents <laughs> Yeah, I've had to grow up myself <laughs> at 62. <laughs> it, it'll force you to do it. It really will. Yeah. <laughs> and not only that, it helps you understand how you need to prepare for your future. Exactly. So that you're not such a, a drain on your children. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And there's nothing wrong with relying on your children. But uh, I think a lot of the problem is is our parents generation well actually you're 10 years older than me so you know the your your parents generation especially never thought about they they were just happy to get through the depression mm -hmm. they never thought about taking care of themselves to the point that uh, I I don't have to rely on everybody and the grandmother so mm -hmm. to, speak, uh, to to take care of me right and so, you know, and, and it's a struggle. I know it is. Uh, I've, you know, I know the fusses and fights with Social Security. I know the fusses and fights with retirement. I know the fusses and fights with Medicaid, Medicare, and the whole nine yards of it uh, because I've, I've been a part of that industry. Uh -huh. So uh, I, uh, I, think, I think what you're doing is a great work. The, the problem is, is you need to make sure you have an audience that hears right. this great work. Right. So if you if you if my suggestion would be, this is March twenty fifth. Fifth. If you could push it back from the middle of April to at least the middle of May. Okay. Then what you and then purposefully interact with as many people as you can, answering problems, finding resources for them, giving them links providing instructions from your experience, uh, even telling stories of your experience, then as you get closer to the time that you're ready to launch, then you're able to say, hey, by the way, I wrote an article on my website about this very same thing. Here's mm -hmm. the link. Okay. And then, and then you're bringing them to your website. Yep. And, and then at the bottom of the article, Hopefully you've got a call to action, and hopefully on the sidebar you've got a call to action. Mm -hmm. and maybe even on a pop-up you've got a call to action to join your group to find out more about your upcoming podcast. Okay. <clears throat> the That's great. The That's other, very helpful. Thank you. Good. The other thing. I would like to have you on my show. Well, I'd love to. Uh, the other thing that I would suggest strongly, and I do this with all of my clients, and they balk until they do it and, and, then, and then they go well that's why he told me to do that and that is if you're planning on coming out with a weekly podcast then make sure you have 
at least eight episodes already recorded plus the introduction when you're ready to launch. Okay. At least eight. I would strongly suggest having probably 12 in the can. Okay. And then releasing a month's worth on day one, uh -huh. then schedule the release of the others. And by doing that, what you've done is you've gotten yourself enough of a runway that you can produce some more episodes and not sweat having to get them out. Plus, you're also giving you extra time to market your podcast and your website. Okay. Okay. Cool. You get the work done early so you don't have to do the work late. Because doing okay. the work late will kill you. You probably have learned that taking care of your parents. Yeah. <laughs> if you push it off, then all of a sudden something happens that's totally unexpected, and now you're sitting there trying to play catch up and take care of this problem. Right. And uh, you know what ends up happening. You take care of the problem, and you left the other thing sort of hanging. Right. Okay, great. Hello, so Twilight Zone. Pardon me? We have a new group, new person in here, Twilight Zone podcast. Oh, cool. But I don't know if their mic is on or what. Are you there, Twilight Zone Podcast? Oh, well. So what are some other issues you're dealing with as you're preparing to launch? Um, just the questions I'm going to ask each person and try to make, you know, the ending uh, unique and and interesting and kind of bring them out personally, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, what would you say to your younger self or something? You know what I'm saying? Something that's yeah. just really catchy and and kind of helps them reveal who they are as a person, not just their roles, you know, or, or their expertise. Okay. Um, well, I mean, you can always ask them, you know, some of those crazy little psychobabble questions, you know, like, what you, you know, What's your favorite color and why, or stuff like that? Mm -hmm. uh, no mic, okay. No mic and camera on the, okay. Great Twilight Zone. We'll, uh, when you get a mic and camera, we'll we'll see you and hear you. How's that? <laughs> I just posted a, a chat message. Yeah, I saw that. Hi, Twilight Zone. So, um, hey Robert. Hey Robert. Uh, but um, but he uh, but what I would do is. Be personal with them. And and here's the cool thing. When you're doing your pre-interview conversation before you record, uh -huh. you'll be able to talk to them a little bit more freely, not as structured and, and as stiff as sometimes interviews will be. Uh -huh. But what you'll do is you'll be able to learn a little bit about them and do some biographical research on them before they come on the show. Right. Yeah. The, okay. So, you know, learn where they're from. You know, learn where they went to school. Learn, you know, learn a little bit about their family if you can find it online. Mm -hmm. and then that will give you a little bit of points of curiosity to be able to uh, to ask them things about themselves. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. Then, um, as far as the interview questions, you got a lot of different ways to go. Uh, John Lee asked structured sets of questions, and he's done very well for himself doing that. <laughs> I, on the other hand, having been a journalist, I don't ask structured sets of questions, but I do have questions prepared, either in my mind or on a piece of paper, that I want to go to, topics that I want to cover. And having been a regular interviewer, I... I tend to more go with the flow, but have a direction in mind. Mm -hmm. And and having learned interviewing skills, under excuse me, understanding that he who asks the questions controls the conversation. Mm -hmm. Then I've learned how to ask questions to lead them back into the direction I want to go. And I will tell you, sometimes you will interview somebody who will seem to take over the show. Mm -hmm. And you have to figure out a way to politely interrupt and say, that's some great information. I really enjoyed that story. But what I okay. asked you, and John Lee has done this before, mm -hmm. but what I asked you was this, and I didn't get that answer. 
And my okay. listeners really need to hear that answer. And, okay. And so you, know, you have to do that sometimes. If somebody runs away, you reel them back in. Okay. So, um, and, and as far as questions, I think you living the experience probably have plenty of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other thing is, is in those communities that you're a part of now, you can say, hey, by the way, I'm going to be interviewing so-and-so. You don't have to tell them it's for a podcast or anything else. Just say, I'm going to be interviewing so-and-so. They play this role in caregiving. If you could ask anybody in this position a question, what would it be? Uh, and you good. might get tons of questions. Mm -hmm. You might get one or two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Richard, uh, it is Richard, right? Robert? Robert. Robert. Robert, uh, I prefer to tailor the questions to the guest. He asked, what do we think about tailoring questions to the guest rather than adding a set of questions like John Lee has? I prefer that way. Here's the thing, though, and John Lee mastered this and does it so very well. He understood that he doesn't have good interview skills. He does now, but he didn't when he started. And so the best way to do it, and I'm sure Damie Tardy told, her, told him this, the best thing to do is have a set of questions. And if you'll go back and listen to some of his earlier episodes, he really struggled in getting that set of questions out. He was, you know, he was very green at it, but he's gotten considerably better in his 600 or so episodes since. So there's no problem with asking a set, you know, cache of questions or repertoire of questions. That's not a problem, but get natural at it. Make sure that you've practiced it over and over and over again. You know, uh, the first, uh, go back and listen to his, he, he uh, released his first episode, which was a test, I think with, with Jamie, I'm not sure who it was, but when he asked, are you ready to ignite, he was so stiff and scared, it was ridiculous. And, and he says so. But the fact of the matter is, and he released that finally, I think at his year one, if I'm not mistaken, he released it because he wanted people to understand that you have to start somewhere. And he started asking a set number of questions, a set type of questions with set wording, the whole nine yards, so that he could build himself into that interviewer that he wanted to be. And there's some benefit to that. Mm -hmm. But like Carol's, Carol's podcast, she's going to be interviewing different types of people in the caregiving industry. And so you might not ask the same questions of a nurse practitioner that you would of a social worker or a chaplain or, uh, you know, whatever. So, you know, having a set number of questions, if you're not asking, if you're not talking to the same number of people. John just seems like the master now. It's hard to believe that he was green. Uh, we all are green at one time or another. I'm not green in front of you because I've been doing this in broadcasting for a number of years, since 1902. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I've been in radio and television since the 80s, so you know it comes a little bit more natural to me. Well, this is exciting. I want to jump off and go go start my content calendar. <laughs> well, here, let me let me give you another piece of advice. When you're working on your content calendar, work on your marketing calendar as well. Because I know, do you have plans to to uh, Build, yes. and build revenue from this? Yes, I do. Well, then you need to have your strategy for monetization already mapped out. Okay. And then when you're mapping it out, marry your content calendar with that marketing calendar mm -hmm. so that when you're producing your podcast, you may record me and plan on bringing me in in September. And so what what you're doing is when you're when you're getting ready to interview me, you're looking at your content calendar to see what you're going to be talking about with me. 
you're going to be looking at your marketing calendar to see what you're going to be promoting on your website and in your business and you're going to marry those two things together and so that helps tremendously uh, so that you can monetize and and the other thing it does is it holds your feet to the fire right because if you've recorded me in May and you're not going to release me until September and you're talking about this new strategy you're going to release in September to bring in some revenue by September you better have your crap ready right so you know it sort of holds your feet to the fire you make yourself accountable to your podcast by doing that okay sounds good Robert I see your mic uh, muting and unmuting do you have your mic plugged in now or something? Yes, I do. Well, you can unmute. We're cool. We're family. It's all right. Okay. <laughs> okay, then let me tell you how to get your mic unmuted. If you look, if you scroll your mouse or whatever up to the top of the screen, you'll see a gear icon. It says settings. Click on it. Well, first, before, to the left of that, you'll see a mic with a line slash through it, click on it and unmute your microphone. See if that does it first. Okay. Uh, Carol, where are you from? Colorado. Colorado. Where it's snowing right now. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I hope it does not snow in Alabama again for another 14 months. Oh, yeah, you guys had it. That was hard on y'all because you don't have that very often. Well, we don't get it, number one, very often, and we don't know how to handle it, number two, I think. Can you talk now, Robert? Okay, now go to the gear and make sure that you've got the right mic chosen. You go up to the gear, click on it, and then you'll see uh, your settings. And if you've got a camera plugged in, you can choose it. And then you choose your input and your output. And hopefully you choose the right mic and everything and it'll work. I would show you, but the video would be this infinite loop all the way back. And <laughs> it would be ugly. <laughs> Uh, so, um, yeah, I've got, some, uh, no, you're not muted. You just don't have the proper mic selected. And this is why I love PodClear. <clears throat> uh, but, uh, but yeah, we've, we've had a bit of, good bit of snow and ice. Nope. Can't hear you, Robert. Can you hear me now? Now yeah. we can hear you. Excellent. Awesome. So, uh, so I would call you Rod instead of Robert. <laughs> okay. Rod Serling. But, oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> but uh, but I won't. So so I think we know what your podcast is going to be about. Have that was watched? one idea. That was one idea I was throwing around just to get my, my hat in the ring because I've yeah. been wanting to podcast for at least five or six years. You know, cool. I've been watching everybody else. I go to podcast meetups. I'm like, i got to do this. And I just didn't know where to get started, and I was really fearful of putting myself out there. Well, an entertainment-based podcast is a cool way to get started. And the reason why is, is it, it, because it's not business-based, uh, you can do it. You can pick any entertainment topic. Twilight Zone would be a great one. There's a number of them out there for Star Trek and for Twilight Zone and other things like that. But none of them will have your perspective. So that would be a great one to cut your teeth on. That's that's true. That that's true. I've been a fan of that show since I was a kid. I'm 45 now, and I remember watching it in the 80s. Yeah. There's some great stories there with some really powerful messages, and that was one of the things. I wanted to put out there is like go over the story, talk about what's going on, how it's relevant to today, not just in the 60s or whenever. And I thought that might be a cool idea. <laughs> Matter of fact, uh, having I'm a minister, and uh, I know there are a number of guys who've come out with products that 
take uh, Happy Days or uh, Mayberry RFD or The Andy Griffith Show and all these other old shows and they apply biblical principles to it. So I think you've got a good, a good idea and concept there of making Twilight Zone relative to today. Right. Thank you. Appreciate that's, it. That's an awesome concept. Uh, and I applaud you and I encourage you to actually do it. Here's the cool thing about that, though. There's only a certain number of episodes. I forget how many episodes of the original Twilight Zone there are, but it's not a lot. Right, yeah, which means there's going to be a limited run, you know. Exactly. And the cool thing is, is you could go and produce all of these all at once and Netflix them. <laughs> I mean, really, you know, uh, you could produce them all and then release them all at one time and do like Netflix does. And then if they want to listen to every one of them, one after the other, after the other, after the other, they can do that. Yeah, that's that's an idea. That's yeah. an idea. Uh, I, I like the Netflix plan. I, I think it's an awesome tool to use. Matter of fact, I relate podcasts to people using Netflix. When they the like, podcast, what's that? And I said, well, are you familiar with Netflix? Yeah. Well, podcast is for audio. What Netflix is for video, for movies. True. Like, oh, okay. So you know. I usually use the analogy of talk radio, but without the radio. Yeah. And it, and, and my thing is I'm not into the traditional talk radio because I'm not into politics and these guys ranting and raving. My dad listens to it all the time, drives me nuts. Ah. But, but I call it talk radio that's actually interesting on topics that you actually want to hear about rather than whatever they throw out there that you're stuck listening to. Right. That, that's just me. No offense to talk radio fans. Well, I haven't been a radio host. I'm not going to take any offense at that. Uh, it's yeah. just that I'm not into politics, and, yeah. and I listen to some of these guys, and they just they, they get everybody worked up, and it's like, where do we go with this? We can't do well, anything about this. And that's the problem I have with talk radio. Yeah. I don't mind if you complain, but freaking offer me some some solutions. My point exactly. And that's why I love podcasting. Right. It's because, as as you probably heard me talking to Carol earlier, uh, when you're in the groups and you're finding problems, offer them answers. But not only that, figure out a way to go more in depth with those answers, so that now you have content created for your podcast. I agree. I agree. People want solutions. They don't want to just hear about problems. They want solutions. And we got enough to... problems. I don't want yours. <laughs> exactly. You know. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you. Now, me, I love solving problems. That's why I'm doing this Hangout. That's why I'm uh, producing my pro my program called Podcast Launchpad. It's because I know that launching is a pain in the glutes. It's the reason why I'm the show notes guy, because I know that writing show notes and writing them well is very difficult and time-consuming. Having been a journalist, I can write. I enjoy writing, so why not offer that as a service to podcasters who want high-quality content on their website? Absolutely. And so that's why I do those things. That's why I'm launching Podcast Launchpad. It's because I've coached enough people to understand that if they're in podcasters' paradise, and I am, matter of fact, I won second place in best new best new podcast in podcasters podcast last year so Ooh. so yeah i mean i'm i'll brag awesome. <laughs> nobody else is going to brag on me uh, so i'll brag a little bit and and you know i ought to i worked hard to make a really good podcast but the fact of the matter is is that a lot of people don't understand number one how to produce high quality content Number two, how to find out the content that their people want to listen to. And number three, how to interact with them so that you start day one with an audience instead of going, oh, crap, now I've created this podcast. How am I going to find somebody to listen to it? Yep, that's where I'm at. How do I get people interested when I you know, haven't even started yet? But yeah, okay, Go to Facebook and search for Twilight Zone. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I am. I forgot about that. I am actually in a Twilight Zone group. Okay. Find two and three of them. <laughs> guess, guess where your audience is. That's true. That's true. I totally forgot about that. So interact with them. Answer questions. If they're, they're trying to find out, you know, uh, what episodes did um, 
William Shatner appear in. If you know that, or you can find it as quickly as possible, Google it in another tab and then put the information in Facebook as quickly as possible. Yeah, you know, there are different things you can do to add value. And when you're giving them something that they value, now they value you. That's right. You're exactly right. And I totally so, forgot about that. And then once they value you, then you can start posting some things about your thoughts about different episodes and start getting conversations going. Oh, uh, yeah. I and totally so forgot about that. Carol and I were talking. My, my strategy is to spend 60 days doing that. There are some other things as well. Podcast Launchpad uh, offers uh, a 60 days worth of emails of giving you things to do to help you grow your audience, help you create your content, you know, find out what content to create, helping you create your content, helping you get the equipment you need for your podcast, the social media aspects, the website aspects, the whole nine yards. I, I walk you through every bit of that with four coaching sessions, one-on-one, -on -one, four group coaching sessions, and then 60 days of emails. And, and I do that because I want you to be able to have your rocket, have your space shuttle, whatever it is you want to put on the launch pad, and send it up with just the right amount of inertia so that you're in the proper trajectory for success. Cool, cool. So, uh, and I, I, I'm, I don't like to sell so much in these, but but that's why I did it is because I've learned enough and I've helped enough people to learn that there are guys and gals like you who are going, well, great, I'm going to do a podcast. What's it going to be about? I don't know. You know well, who are you going to talk to? I don't know. Well, how are you going to find these people? I don't know. I just want to do a podcast. Cool. What are you, what are you passionate about? What are your interests? What are your talents? What are your skills? How will all of them work together into something you can produce as a podcast and as a product if you want to monetize that people will want? Right, and right. So my podcast is called The Podcasters, and it's there because I want to help podcasters. And so, and I talk to podcasters, and I learn from them, and when I learn from them, I give that information to other people through the podcast, through training, through other things as well. A so, couple questions, Philip. Yes. yes. Um, what do you put in your show notes? Is there a structure that you have? And Okay, go ahead. You can answer that first. Yeah. Um, if you go to shownotesguy.com and sign up for my email list, you'll get five lessons sent to you in email across 10 days. And that tells you how to build show notes. And I'll tell you the basic structure. You have a good descriptive title. You take your content, your audio content, and, and you grab a number of great quotes. And then you build some subheadings. And under those subheadings are the major categories of your discussion, which in the interview process, if you're asking like John, John Lee a structured set of questions, you immediately have the structure for your show notes. Mm -hmm. That's your subheading. Put your subheading in an H2 tag because Google likes H2 tags. Mm -hmm. So put the subheadings in the Google tags. Share a link at least twice in every episode, show notes. Do not ever put a link to like, for instance, podcastlaunchpad.net. You want to put a link to podcastlaunchpad.net slash about or slash, you know, whatever. You don't want to put it directly to the straight URL. The reason why is it doesn't get ranked as highly. So put it to something else on that website. But, and, and, Preferably put it to to something else since you're going to put your link at least twice in the show notes. But under each subheading, you want to get one or two quotes. You also want to build that into two or three paragraphs of about three to 600 words each. That's why I write 3,000 word show notes. My show okay. notes are typically two to 3,000 words. Uh, let me back up. 
I don't write show notes for the podcasters because I'm too busy writing show notes for other podcasters. <laughs> but that's a good problem to have. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've yet found anyone I can train to write them like I like them. So that's I'm working on that. Try and find some college kids I can train. And you post that on your website? You post uh, them on your website? I do. And okay. let me tell you a little secret. If you will post your content in Libsyn, if you're using Libsyn in the uh -huh. description, then um, I showed this to somebody earlier today I was coaching. A lot of people don't know this. Let me pause this. Okay. Can you see my iPhone? Yes. Okay, that is my one of my podcast episodes. And if you tap this, okay, there's my show notes. Not only that, there's links in that show notes. You see that? Podcast uh -huh. movement, show notes guy. Uh, there's some others as well. So Pottertainment. So you can build the links. You can actually embed images in that just like you can HTML. It's an HTML editor, editor in Libsyn. And so all the, they don't have to go to your website to get your show notes. They can just tap the icon. Now some of them, Spreaker and Stitcher, I'm not sure if they translate the links or not, but at least in iPhone you can. Mm-hmm. And if you use a plugin like I have called Simple Podcast Press, it will take all that information from your RSS feed and embed it into your website. Okay. So, I mean, that's the cool part of that process. You can go on and write your show notes and then upload your audio and upload your show notes to Libsyn. And with Simple Podcast Press, it shows up on your website automatically when it goes live. Cool. So it shortens your process a little bit. And I have an affiliate link to that, but I don't remember it, so I'm not going to give it to you. <laughs> SimplePodcastPress.com or .net, I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay. And, I, and it's a great plug-in. Beautiful. It's so good. John Lee Dumas uses it in his podcast websites platform. So if you have a podcast website, website, then you'll be using Simple Podcast Press. It's automatically installed. Okay. Which, by the way, that is a great platform. I'm not on it, but it is a great platform. Okay. Robert, what about you, buddy? Um, bad. I had to step away. I missed something. Oh, okay. Well, I was just wondering, what else are you struggling with? What can I help you do to get ready to launch? Um, well, the truth of the matter is I had all these ideas, and I, I, I get started, but then I get frozen by fear. Even though I'm a technology person, I did tech support for like 10, 15 years, but I have like zero experience with online stuff. All my stuff has been like the hardware side of things, you know? The other side of the, qu the equation is... Oh, somebody's phone's ringing. It's Carol. Um, the other side of the equation is um, I've really been out of work for a while, and every day I'm thinking, should I be investing in podcasting, which I really want to do, or should I be out there doing other stuff that could lead to you know, income? And I was wondering, too, I spent a lot of time researching whether podcasting could lead to income, and there again, I just kind of end up running around in circles. You know, I see people doing it, and I'm like, is this something that could work for me, though? You know? let, me give you, let me give you two answers. The first answer is both. You need to have a, a runway. You need to have some cash. You know, you got to have that regular infusion of cash. Now, if you're just now on unemployment and you got a year or so of, of unemployment, they don't pay crap, but you can find a way to monetize a podcast. Anybody can find a way to monetize a podcast. Uh, <clears throat> but... What I would suggest to you is to uh, make sure that you've got some income, especially if you have a family. If you're single, you know you can play a little bit more dangerously with it. But I would suggest strongly to you know find a way to get some regular income. True. Yeah, totally single. Um, but yeah, in need of income. Yeah. <laughs> so find the income. That's the yeah. question. Find the income and figure out how you can produce your podcast. True, true. Okay, and and here's the thing. 
the like I said, the cool thing with the Twilight Zone. Hold on a second. Uh, there, where'd my mouse go? There it is. Give me a second. Let me copy this link and give it to somebody. Okay. Okay. Uh, good. Christian may come in. <clears throat> if you because Twilight Zone is a finite product, you already have the ability to get the list of all the episodes the plots of all the episodes, the characters of all the episodes. Hello, Christiane Wargo. Hello. Christiane is, is one of my clients, and she can tell you, R Robert, she was at the same stage you were. She had been in Podcasters Paradise for six months, paying for it, paying for Libsyn, paying for some other stuff, web hosting and everything else. And for six months, she struggled to figure out how to get going and then three weeks after we started she launched and a month after she launched she had a membership site and now it's producing revenue for her. Wow. so there's your answer Robert yes anybody can monetize from a podcast anybody can you've got to have the strategy you got to know how you're going to do it and you've got to start so Christiane is that not true that is 100% true coach or I should say Sir Philip <laughs> I don't know about sir, but <laughs> so Christiane, tell tell them a little bit about what you went through in in those weeks leading up to your podcast launch. Um, leading up to it, I I went and I've been I've been on a journey for a long time. My journey started in 2010, and um, I really knew who I wanted to serve, who my audience was, and so I took it. I was gathering all the information, but like I told Philip, it was I had enough information that I was dangerous, but I couldn't put it all together, and so I was getting to crunch time. I really wanted to launch, uh, but I just felt like I was spinning my wheels and going absolutely nowhere. In fact. That's my title for today on my podcast. And so um, I reached out to Philip and I said, is this something you can help me with? I really, I just need someone to get in my brain and organize me because I can handle it for everybody else. You see, I'm a nutritionist, I'm a certified personal trainer, and I'm a lifestyle strategist and life coach. So, and a mom of five. <laughs> yes, I'm a mommy of five plus um, a, a wife of now almost 22 years. So... Um, to say the least, busy is not a word that describes my lifestyle. Um, it's chaotic all the time and a lot of party every day. But I really needed somebody to come in and show me all the dangerous stuff that I had gathered, but put it together for me and say, this is where you are, Christiane. This is your next step. Now do this. Now do this. I needed someone for it to keep me accountable. And that's exactly what Sir Philip did. I mean, he, he just took me by the hand and met me where I was at. And I think that was key because I was a part of a bigger podcasting group. And that was great. But I needed the one-on-one. -on -one. The big group wasn't enough for me. And so that's when I, I called on Sir Philip. And so three weeks prior um, to launching, this was in December, okay? We're talking, it was right after Thanksgiving. And I know in my mind, I'm sure Philip thought I was absolutely crazy. Like, you're going to launch over the holidays? I said, uh, yeah. And my launch date was January 5th. And so um, just a little bit after Thanksgiving, we connected. And I said, can you help me with this? He said, yes, let's do it. So he held me accountable. We went through the motions. I launched with 28 episodes on uh, January 5th. I actually submitted my iTunes with three episodes, um, and then I added on 25 on the actual day I launched. And the crazy thing is, is I submitted. Okay, I was I felt like I was so far behind, but I kept telling Philip, I said, I'm going to do this. I don't care if it takes two weeks for iTunes to approve my account. I'm still going to submit it, even though it's over the holidays. I submitted it on, I think it was December 31st. It was. And, and within, it was less than eight and a half hours, I was approved. And they now, were saying then it was two to three weeks. Yeah. Let me, let me tell you, the funny thing about that is, is that John Lee Dumas had just a week before that published a letter that came out from iTunes. I got it as well, that if you're planning on publishing a podcast uh, on iTunes, you need to do it now because we're going to have minimal manpower during the holidays, and it may take two weeks. And eight hours later, she gets hers. So I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. 
It was awesome. It was. And obviously it was meant to be. I mean, everything was falling in. So I was approved. I was live um, on December 31st in iTunes. And so I even threw together a, a Happy New Year one that I had not even planned because I was live. I thought, well, if somebody stumbles upon me, I want them to have kind of a neat greeting. And so I threw one together and then actually published all the rest of them, my original ones, the 25 on um, January 5th. And going strong now, I'm over 19,400 downloads so far since launch and came off of <laughs> iTunes, uh, new and noteworthy, um, in all my categories, and I was in five categories, um, I held the number one spot multiple times and in fact three to four times when I ranked one in all of them. Um, I did not do, you probably have heard some buzz stuff about Twitter bombing all of this. I got to tell you, I'm not the social media queen. I did not use social media like I could have, okay? I did what I could do within my area and I served my audience. And now coming off of New and Noteworthy, they are continuing to come with me. I probably maybe have lost, I don't know, maybe 50 downloads a day. Seriously, not that much. I've stayed pretty much consistent. But the thing is, is it's usually their schedule because I'm now operating at seven days a week on my podcast. Now, she started doing five days a week. And Correct. against my advice, <laughs> she added the other two days. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, is if you do like she does and you batch this stuff because you have a content calendar and a marketing calendar, like I told you, Carol, if you do these things and you have your strategy already in place, it's easy to add two more days to it because you've already got your strategy in place. You just have to add the extra two days worth of content have the extra two days worth of marketing, do it all in a batch, get it all out there, and then you sit back and relax. So, and, and Christiane, talk a little bit about that, how I carried you through the process of putting your content and your marketing together so that from day one, you were already selling what you were going to be selling. Right. We, um, we sat down, and I had my big desk calendar. You know those ones that you can buy at Walmart or Target for like four bucks? Well, I had one of those, and um, I had ripped off some of the pages. And when, with, I, I told Philip, I said, wait, and I was sitting on the floor writing down everything we were talking about. And we were making up the calendar, literally right then. He's like, okay, now you can't forget special events, so you need to mark special events on your calendar. I'm like, oh, yeah, so we've got like the Super Bowl. So I did a Super Bowl one. Um, you know, back to school, coming off the holidays. So we started writing all of that down. We had a plan <coughs> over three months worth of time. And I just started filling in the blanks. Um, and then, like I said, I would pop in every once in a while and add one that was kind of off season because I wanted to. Like I did one that was like just dropping by. Um, and it was just a real quick hello. But Philip just walked me through everything. He said, you know, we talked about my audience, who who my focus was. Um, for me, it's specifically women. It's moms, and it's a podcast that's directed. Um, it's by me. I do not do interviews, so it's a little bit easier for me to coordinate all of this because it's only me. Um, eventually, I'll probably sprinkle in some interviews, but. It's, you know, for me to launch that fast, I was able to because I was only dealing with one person. I didn't have to coordinate all the interviews. Uh, even though we had discussed that as a possibility as to how I could strategize that too, um, we I opted not to go that route. So I literally had this huge poster board of, of information that took me three months out from my launch as to what I was going to do. And all I had to do is then go record it. And that was just time, and I would do it. I fit it in the nooks and crannies of my day. Um, I planned as to when I wanted to launch my membership site. Um, like I've got a group of gals now that's um, in my group, and I'm launching another one in April and another one in May. And so uh, it really, it, it all just kind of came together, and it was awesome. And if it wasn't for Philip, truly, I know today I would still be sitting there going, yeah, um, I want to be a podcaster and have a podcast, and I wouldn't have launched, but I needed that push, and he gave it to me. He did. I mean, there were times I'm like, I, I don't know, Philip. I don't think I can do this. He said, wait, what did you tell me? What is your goal? And so he kept pushing me because he knew that's what I wanted. But when I got tired, he reminded me gently, 
<laughs> and nicely saying, hey, you know, get your butt going. You can do this. Don't give in. Don't give in. I don't think I used the word butt, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. I don't think it was that. <laughs> But uh, and and you know the thing is is I helped Christiane realize she had resources at her avail that she wasn't even thinking about. Her daughter is really good at audio editing with GarageBand, so she was able to get her daughter to either teach her how to use GarageBand or to use GarageBand and help her edit. And so you know now she's been able. I think she's actually used at least three of her children in helping her get her podcast going and, and continuing. So, you know, you've, you've, you're able to find resources that you can use that you didn't even think of, especially if you have a coach around going, well, what about, what about, what about, what about? And so, uh, so that's, thank you, Christiane, for, for your words of, and I never knew that I was knighted, so I appreciate knowing that. <laughs> uh, you're welcome, Sir Philip. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so Robert, that should answer your question. Can you can you monetize your podcast? Absolutely. And especially, I'm I'm already my brain's already flying. You ask Christiane, I come up with all sorts of ideas. My brain's already flying about how to monetize a Twilight Zone podcast. So, hey, Philip. Yes, ma'am. Can I just add one thing? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I don't know where you guys are at in each of your in, in your journeys right now, but I, I want to tell you, if you're sitting there on the fence and you're going, gosh, is this worth it? And you've got you got to reach down in your gut, okay? And you got to say, is this really what I want? If this is your dream and you know this is a stepping stone, maybe this isn't your final portion of your dream, but it's the stepping stone, I'm telling you, grab hands with Philip. And he will help you soar. He is one that um, I know. It, he just he took me gingerly and gently, and said, "This is what you need to do." And I know honestly that I wouldn't be where I am today without his coaching, guarantee hands down. And I owe everything I've accomplished so far in the podcasting industry really truly to him because it was him who I called. It wasn't. The big group that I was a part of, I contacted my coach because he was my one-on-one. -on -one. He's the one who kept saying, you know what, you can do this, or like he said, have you thought about this, or what about this step? It's, it's just, it's a way to kind of have a drone view. You know, we're no longer in hot air balloons, we're in drones. <laughs> so it's taking that view from afar, and he's not emotionally attached to it, but I guarantee you, yes, he wants you <laughs> well wait, wait hold on he wants to see you succeed so with that he will help you all the way through no matter what it takes and I guarantee you there are coaches out there that truly are in it only for the dollar signs they want to say I'm doing this but I'm telling you coach Philip coaches from the heart he leads with the heart and he has a brain attached to it and that is awesome <laughs> talk to me it just, it really is. So if you're on the fence, I'm saying take a leap of faith because that's what I did. And, uh, oh, my goodness, I'm, I'm having a blast with it. And I don't even know what your topics are. But if there's any way I can help serve you all, if you have questions that you want to ask me or you want to go offline, I know Philip would be fine for it. Send me an email. You can send me an email at Christiane at createyournow.com. And ask me whatever questions if you're wondering, oh, I'm afraid to ask here. I've been there. I've been in a big group going, oh, I don't know. Just send me an email offline, Christiane, that's K-R-I-S-T-I-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at createyournow.com. And I'll be happy to answer any private questions that you have. Um, because, you know, Philip took the time, and I don't think a lot of people do that. They don't invest their heart and that is a game changer for me. Thanks, Philip. Thank you, Christiane. I'm going to, I'm going to tell on you a little bit. Oh, no. <laughs> Christiane, I con contacted Christiane two months before she finally said, let's do this. I'd, I'd like, Christiane, she kept saying, I want to get started. I want to get started. And I'm like, let me help you. Let me help you. I can coach you through this. Let me help you. I promise you, you'll get it going and you'll succeed if you let me help you. Am I lying? 
Nope, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I'm saying to you guys is I can help you, uh, and I can help you succeed. Just reach out to me. I, I'm here. Uh, I'll, I'll do what I can. And, and that podcastlaunchpad.net is, is a good site. Uh, I've already got some content on there about WordPress, about podcasting, and some other social media stuff as well. So you can find articles already on the website that will help. Uh, but I, I promise you, I want you to succeed. Christiane just put her email address in the chat room. So I want I want podcasters to succeed, and and yes, I'm being a little bit selfish about it because if podcasters succeed when they run out of time and they still want to have great content on their website, guess who they're going to call? Philip Swindle, the show notes guy. So yeah, I'm there's a little bit of selfish incentive there. Yes, I will admit that, but the truth of the matter is, is I want to help people succeed, whether it's in podcasting or in life. That's why I'm a minister. I want to help people succeed in life. And so if I can help you in any way, please ask. Uh, reach out to me. Uh, I, do, I do some things you know, from time to time for free because I've been there. I know what it is to bootstrap. Uh, so you know, I do help people a little bit for free, but it is a business for me now. I'm, right. I'm, I'm a part-time bivocational pastor, and I don't mind telling you uh, the church only pays me $600 a month. So guess where my revenue comes from? From Podcast Launchpad and from Show Notes Guy. So I don't mind, I don't mind saying that, don't mind confessing it. Uh, I'm, I, I am proud to say my wife loves me and she supports me and she's happy with my business. So those three things being said, I must be doing something right. So uh, I want, and Christiane likes me. She knighted me for God's sake. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, so you know, I've got folks who will say, yes, he can lead you to success. So I invite you to allow me to lead you to success, if at all possible. So any other questions from you guys before we leave? Because it's like 7 after 11. Robert? Is it on now? Yeah, it's on now. Oh, okay. I guess I had it on mute. No, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. Uh, that's great. Uh, Robert, I'm telling you, Twilight Zone, you let me know when that podcast is live. I will subscribe. I will rate. I will review, and I'll listen to every episode because wow, I love awesome. Rod Serling's Twilight Zone. That's awesome. Thanks. I will do the same for yours. I, I, I got to look up your thing in iTunes there, and I will start listening right away to see what you got too. Great. Carol, what about you? Any more questions? No, I'm good. I, I, you helped me a lot. Good. And actually, Christiane gave me an idea too. It's I don't have to interview people all the time because since I'm walking this, I've got I've got things to share myself, so I can I can build up my podcast all by myself too. Exactly. And thank see, you. Here's the cool thing: you can go from a monologue, and then as she's saying, pepper in some interviews, put some interviews in there, and then if you want to, eventually transition to all interviews. Right, but it takes a strategy. It takes knowing what your plans are and putting those plans into practice. Right. And, and that's what a coach does. You know, it's just like I'm. I'm from Alabama. I'm a big Alabama Crimson Tide football fan. We've got more <laughs> national championships than anybody else in college football for a reason, and that's because they've had great coaches, and those coaches develop a strategy, they translate that strategy to the people who are putting it into practice, and they teach the skills, the fundamentals, and all the skills that they need, and then they put all of those things together into a winning strategy, and then put them out on the field and let them get the victory. And, and that's what a coach does. So if I can help you guys in any way, I'll be more than happy to do so. Well, guys, I want to thank you. I've got a phone call that I've got to take from somebody who I'm coaching. So <laughs> I've, got, okay. I've got a tight schedule today. So thank you guys very thank much. Thank you so much, Phil. I I'll be contacting you. I hope I helped. I hope I offered you some great content, some great steps. Robert, I'm telling you, get the list of episodes and start writing your content now because you're going to do this podcast after you get a job. <laughs> I will do that, Philip. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you, buddy. Have a good one. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.